Dustin, uh, who's a real estate agent, a blogger, speaker, and founder of SearchSaltLake.com. Uh, um, Dustin wrote a really good article on him a few months ago saying that agents need to stop whining about disruption and do something about that. So I wanted to give him a chance to kind of talk about what that article was about and what should they be doing uh, to avoid disruption in the industry. Sure. So the main theme of that article was inspired by a local Facebook group in Salt Lake where a lot of, a lot of local agents were complaining about uh, this new for sale by owner assistance company. And, you know, they're like, oh, they're going to put us all out of business. And, you know, then Zillow's instant offers came. And it, people are just so damn fearful of being put out of business. And they think it's going to happen next month. And so I just I put it out there to just say, look, technology is something that should be embraced because if, there's so many amazing things that we have in our pockets that are so powerful. You can reach so many people a lot of time for free. But if you don't utilize it, if you don't embrace it, you're, you're leaving money on the table. You're leaving, um, you're just, you're going to be left behind. So Yeah, we're talking about how agents can stay relevant, how we avoid the uh, disruptive things, a lot of things that we talked about this morning on the main stage. Uh, Amy, uh, Amy Brockhammer is the, uh, did I pronounce it correct? You kind of looked at me. Uh, lead realtor of the Amy B. Real Estate Team with Keller Williams in Cincinnati and a speaker, trainer, and coach. Uh, you created, uh, you've, you've told me they have two mantras. Um, tell me about your mantras. What are they and how do they relate to what we're talking about today? Well, I think the, uh, the one that relates the most to what we're talking about today is the concept of the more value you add, the more valuable you become. And it's just constantly reminding me and my team that if we're not adding value, then we're not going to be relevant. And that's something that I think a lot of realtors need to understand is you can buy a house online, but don't you want to show them how much better of an experience they can have and how much more confidence they can have if they're working with an agent? And, you know, just like what Dustin said, if, if, if the agents aren't adding value, there's going to be no reason for them to be chosen. So... You know, that's a concept that I learned very early. And back in the days when I used to sell copiers, um, my manager taught me that price is only an issue in the absence of value. And I know that there's a lot of discounting going on with the online opportunities. And again, if you're not showing your value, they're not going to buy into the opportunity. I want to follow up with that because I want to talk a little bit about what we do to add value. But first, I want to introduce John Sims. Uh, Director of Development at Lake Homes Realty, based in Birmingham, but uh, throughout the country. Uh, tell us a little bit about the business model, because it's so different. I want to make sure they understand where you're coming from on it. Oh, sure. Uh, thank you for that opportunity. We're, uh, we're the nation's only lake-focused brokerage that's out there, and uh, being national, right now that means we're in 12 states, uh, from New York down around through the southeast and into Texas. I get the pleasure of researching literally thousands of agents, and I've traveled hundreds of thousands of miles to meet with many of these agents because with that business model in the fact that we only want a very small number, uh, we want a special operations team in each market, a small number of agents that are better equipped, more motivated, better educated than anyone else that can go in and do very well in that market. So I get to travel and meet with many of these agents. So if we were to sort of summarize kind of where we're coming from, uh, at least from in terms of the, the, the relevancy issue, you're talking about relevancy as a means of sort of staying in touch with technology and using it to your advantage rather than being afraid of it. You talked about adding value to the transaction because if you're not adding value, you're out. And your whole company is built on being relevant by finding a niche product and becoming experts in that niche product. So there's sure. sort of three different ways in which we can kind of talk about that. Um, what do you guys see as, I, I thought your point was exactly right, that this has to be the most insecure industry I've ever been a part of. I've never, I, I mean, I was a lawyer, and lawyers are horrible, and they're parasites on the whole world, and yet we were really proud. Like, we never worried. We never thought that, like, oh, my God, this thing, we're going to put out of business. Like, you can't, every week, every week, I'm going to put something out, and, like, I get a whole bunch of text messages. What is this all about? So what... Most recently was the instant offers things, but it's been a series, a cascade of things for the last five years. What do you think of as the biggest challenge we face 
Um, and what are some of the ways in which we can combat it? What do you see as the biggest challenge to our relevancy as agents and brokers? Go ahead. I personally think we have too low of a barrier of entry in this industry. Amen. Um, and I think that... Half of you clapping wouldn't have made it over a higher barrier. What are you talking about? <laughs> Raise that barrier now that we're over the wall. Yeah. The barrier is too low, and many of the agents, and we were just talking about this before, young and old, and in the middle, they don't invest in education and training and the newest opportunities. And um, that's just such an important part of adding value and being relevant in today's real estate world. When you're not embracing the online signatures, when you're not embracing you know, these opportunities of marketing the home online, that's doing our clients a disservice. And um, if we all would raise our standards, I think that we would raise our industry. And, and I commend you for focusing on those agents that are growth mindset. Well, thank you, ma'am. And, and I echo uh, those same sentiments. Uh, Innovation is always going to be there. You know, tech is always going to be there, but somehow we've we've kind of twisted things and gotten it gotten it set in our minds that that that's the enemy, that's the challenge that we need to overcome. And tech's not the problem. Tech's nothing more than a tool, a tool for you to leverage to get in front of more clients to scale your business and so on and so forth. Move your mic a little closer to your mouth. I just they, they can't hear you out there. Thank you a little bit. Uh, you don't have to repeat think, everything you said. I'm just saying. For going I think forward. what we need to concentrate on is the fact if we want to identify the the, the biggest danger in our business now, uh, go back to the 2015 NAR Danger Report. You know, within that report, uh, it told us, excited the fact that the number one danger to agents out there are the the masses of marginal, i.e., crappy agents that are destroying the reputation of real estate agents. Just don't be one of those agents. And the way we're going to tackle that, that's a, probably another con conversation for another day. Step number one is raising those barriers to entry. Do you have something you remember? Yeah, e even though, like you said, we're a very insecure industry, which I think is spot on, we're also a very arrogant industry. Thank you. And, and that comes in a lot of ways, but a lot of the arrogance I'm seeing now is that, okay, technology and, and the options available to us for marketing and for reaching clients is changing so fast. Every single week there's new features that come out from Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and you know some new program from Zillow or whatever. And if you're not taking advantage of those um, because you think that where you're at now, because you're successful now, that a year from now, two years from now, that you're s doing the same thing is still gonna work, you're kidding yourself. So you're really... <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited for this because a lot of people out there, probably some of you guys, just aren't doing what it takes to be relevant in two years. And so two years from now, I'm going to be doing just fine. And a lot of you won't, and it sucks. So not for me. For you. Yeah. He kept looking at me whenever he was saying you. You're not going to... He would kind of look over. I take that personally. At least I didn't poke your chest. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Let's, Amy said before about bringing value, and it kind of fits with something I was talking about earlier today about the value proposition and how that's changed and how we need to enhance and update our value proposition. So I want to ask you guys, if you can tell me 30 seconds or less, I'll actually ask each of you, what is the value that we bring? Let's start with sellers. What is the value that we bring to sellers that, that differentiates us, that justifies hiring us, justifies the commission? You can go in any order, whoever wants to jump in first. We'll start on that side. Comfort, convenience, and expertise. Uh, any seller out there can go FISBO. Uh, they can put the listing on any number of websites there are. Real estate agents can do the same thing. But real estate agents are uniquely positioned. Uh, hopefully, they're uniquely educated and motivated to, to really get it out there and target market. That's extremely important now. Target market those listings to people that will actually buy it. Okay. So target marketing and, oh, sorry, target marketing and um, uh, now I lost the first Comfort, time. convenience, Comfort, and expertise. Comfort, convenience, and the expertise that you bring in the transaction. Yes, Amy. The thing that resonates the most with me is the opportunity that we all have to be honest with our clients 
and to truly tell them the truth about their property in terms of pricing, preparation, and motivation, and making sure that we're not taking a listing that we know is priced too high or that won't sell, because again, that's lowering the bar. And I begin every transaction with a client by asking them the question, do I have permission to be honest with you? And that sets the stage for the rest of our transaction, and it's the most important question that I ask. That's a great question. Can I have permission to be honest with you? Your house is overpriced, and you live horribly, and we have to clean everything out. That's, like, that's a very difficult discussion to have. And it's good to get the permission to be honest beforehand. Yeah, go ahead. The, you know, the whole what is your value question, it, the answer to that is so personal for so many of us. And to be honest, I, don't, I have a hard time trying to to make it sound like I am the only one in Salt Lake City who does A, B, or C. Because there's so many of us, I don't think that that's true. There's a lot of great agents. But what I focus on with a seller is what, what I do have that most agents don't, and that's a website with a bunch of traffic, knowledge of you know 360 Facebook Live video, Snapchat, Instagram stories, and, and I focus on exposure for their home. And I explain to them how by getting more exposure, by getting more eyeballs, the home sells for more, and you're gonna walk away with, with more money. And, and so I go into those specific things that I do to get them more exposure, and then I, you know, I talk about the service I give them, how much I care, how accessible I am, but I don't make it sound like no one else does, because first off, that's not true. Yeah, I always, I've never liked the sort of approach that you go in and say, I'm the only person who can sell this house, or you know, yeah. a really great agent for a seller can make a difference on the margins. I mean, maybe there's, you know, you make a difference, you get a little bit more, you sell it a little bit faster, but those differences can add up. I mean, if you're talking about, you know, 1% more than the other agent would have gotten, 1% could be $6,000, $7,000 uh, in certain markets or more. And time uh, is money too. And time is money too. And, and I think the thing that we don't stress enough is the experience that the person can have, and which is, to some extent, because we don't feel like we control it. The worst part of the real estate experience is what happens after we get them into an accepted offer. Everything up to the accepted offer is usually fun. I mean, from buyers, it's shopping, right? They're shopping. That's what, and the sellers, yeah, the staging stuff is a pain in the ass, having to keep the house clean and stuff. But it's what happens after they get into, con it's after the offer's accepted, now it's contract, inspections, mortgage, title. Those are, do we, what do we do? Because we don't control that part of the transaction. That's the part that Brad's always complaining about. Brad has this whole thing now about the real estate transaction. He's writing about it constantly. But the part that he's always complaining about is all the stuff that we don't do. Well, how do we fix that? So part of my process is bulletproofing the transaction. That's what I call it. Nice. And what I know about in the state of Ohio, 42% of all transactions that fall apart do so because of inspections. And 49% fall apart because of either a bad lender or a bad appraisal. So what I am doing in my listings to read- That's 96%, 96% fall through? And then there's something else like random okay. percents that's in a, there. That, that, that's a big yeah, one. So they're, that's they're major. The appraisal and the inspection. So right. you, and you're in a state where they do the inspections after contracts, so that could yes. destroy a contract, okay. Yeah. And this is a relationship business, and, and our agents not only develop relationships with the clients, they develop relationships with other business entities, the title company, the inspector, so on and so forth, whom, they can trust and know will take care of that client just as well as that agent will. Uh, in, in our particular niche of lake real estate, there, there are more gotchas with that. There, there are more regulatory requirements uh, in lake as opposed to off lake than just your normal with HOA state local requirements that you normally run into. Our clients have been dreaming about this property for years. They've been saving, they've been waiting on this life event to get there. The value proposition for these agents is to be able to walk them through and be a, con a conduit from that dream, that idea, to actually someone dropping those keys into their hands. And once they're there, not having any surprises come back on them. Interesting. I, I do want to hear, because I know we, uh, we may have cut you off, bulletproofing the transaction. What do you, and you mentioned about the things that, that kill the transaction. What are the things you do to keep that, all that bad stuff from happening? I do a pre-inspection prior to listing and it eliminates a lot of additional and unnecessary stress. You do it personally or you have somebody do I it? I have my clients do the pre-inspection okay. on 
probably 90% of our transactions. And then in terms of the bank, and people are very shocked when I say this, there are offers that come in on our properties that I will encourage my clients not to accept based on the type of loan or lender yeah. or the lender's track record. And people can't believe that so many times because most agents think they have to take every offer that comes their way. But it doesn't make sense to take an offer from a bank that has a reputation for not closing a loan because you're gonna have to go and resell that house and now it's gonna have some stigma to it. So just being aware of the different ways that you can impact those downfalls and, and work against them or, or bulletproof them has really been great for me and I've been able to sell all my listings for a few years now. Like Amy's saying, it all comes down to preparing the client for what to expect. And you have to, you have, to have the discussion up front about what can go wrong and what pitfalls there are and what challenges they might have. Because if you wait until it happens, until you have a crappy appraisal or the inspection is a disaster, it's, it's so much more stressful for the client and for you. So... That's the, your value. Exactly. And, and Future so, pacing. Right. Yeah. And the fact that you do an inspection beforehand is genius, um, something I need to implement myself, because then all the stuff that could come up, they know about. When it comes up, it's like, cool, we're already going to get it fixed tomorrow or whatever. Or you yeah. got it fixed before you actually or it, showed the house to any yep. human being. You're solving so. problems before they become problems. Yes. Right. So just, just taking the time to lay it all out for the seller and the same on the buyer's side. Let them know what to expect. Let them know the pitfalls and you know, appraisals and inspection and earnest money and everything. You just have to take the time to prepare them for that process. I asked before. Oh, you got, got you something to jump it's in It's just on? about communicating well and often. Um, I'd asked before, what is the value we provide to sellers? So let me flip it around. What is the value we provide to buyers? Buyers, for the most part, they're looking in such a narrow market that they find the new listing that hits the market before their agent does, since their agent is trying to watch lots of different market segments for lots of different clients. It's impressive how, how, how quickly they find On top those. of the buyers are, yeah. yeah. The buyers, so the buyers have incredible search technology at their fingertips. They, they don't need us to open the door anymore or to... Uh, tell them what's for sale. They can find that out. So those were two of the things that 20 years ago was the big value we provided, and they're gone. So what, what is the value we now provide? What's the value we provide now to buyers as opposed to sellers? So in my market, it's a very, very hot seller's market. So you, you know, I explain that, first off, if you have the expectation of finding a deal, you're not going to find a deal. And, you know, it's just not going to happen. So I explained, you're probably going to have to pay way more than what they're asking. And, and so I just explain, like, you know, it's kind of my secrets on how to get deals. I love the idea that educating the client about what's going to happen in the process is so important yeah. in terms of preparing them for that, getting them engaged in the process. So they're not just sitting back, that there are no surprises. A lot of times we treat them like they're timid little, little rabbits eating out of our hand, and we don't want to scare them. The last thing we want to do is tell a buyer how expensive it is to buy a house up Raise front. Raise the bar. Surprise them later. Uh, tell what's, what's some of the other value we provide to buyers? And you can see Bef our time. Before we begin working with a buyer and putting them in our car, we have three things that we require. A buyer consultation. Nice. A pre-approval letter with a trusted lender that we know. Um, and a loyalty agreement signed so that we know that we're working for someone that's also loyal to us. That's our requirement. We will not work with someone that doesn't do those three things up front. Okay. I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, they're better educated now as buyers than ever before, thanks to the Internet. Uh, where they used to come to us and, and say, we're looking for three bedrooms, two baths in this area, then they're saying, we want to see this, 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 and this. That does not make them market experts. Uh, there is a role there. There's an ability, an opportunity for agents to, to educate and advocate. All right, we are out of time, but I want to get one quick uh, takeaway, 10 seconds or less, really quick. Something that you picked up from here, from the main stage, whatever. Something you want to leave them with. Go buy a 360 camera and start doing Facebook Live 360 video. Nice, next. Think about all the things that you repeat multiple times to clients over and over and make videos of those and share those with them so that you don't have to constantly repeat them. 
If you want to remain relevant, provide what tech can't and most other agents aren't, and that is the comfort and the convenience and expertise in walking them through this process. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, thank, thank my panel, please. <laughs>